Hello, welcome to another Tonal Sunscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the paint I'm bringing you today is called Tree in the Field Circle. And um, I painted this uh, a couple days back. I'm real happy with it. I'm working. I got the circle. It's great because I got the circle. Um, it's MDF and um, no, it's hardboard. But uh, I got it, uh, which is, uh, is I'm not going to bother trying to remember right now, HDF. Um, yeah, I got this at the uh, local, like, big box hardware store, so it was, not, you know, it's super expensive. Last time I did this, I had to uh, have that cut out of a, um, uh, you know, a piece of hardboard myself by uh, one of the artists there at the quarry, and that wasn't uh, cheap. <laughs> it was neat, but it wasn't cheap. Anyway, uh, we're doing, um, it's a tree portrait, I would say, and um, yeah, you know, I, I, uh, the title, well, it is what it is, but um, I painted this tree quite a lot. I took this uh, reference photo back in something like 2011 or so. That tree is probably really, really big now. Um, it's just a tree in someone's yard, you know, so never, and it seems like every time I paint it, which I love painting it, and um, uh, I, it's, it's, you know, it tends to sell, so it's also, um, pretty cool, um, in that I can kind of measure my, my skills and things against it, so what I like about this particular painting is that it went pretty quick, um, now we're doing the, uh, it went quick, it looks fresh, you know, nice and bright too, I've been trying to work with my studio lighting to give me a, a brighter result, um, yeah, it's still going to be somewhat dark and tonal, but, you know, always tonal. Anyway, um, working with some burn number, mostly, and I didn't put in my perlene uh, this time, because uh, part of my plan was to have a lot of these reds. It's quite reddish, but I want that humming through, because the whole painting is very green. If you saw the little um, uh, thumbnail at the beginning of the video, you know what I'm, I'm talking about, but... Uh, it's going to be a really good uh, little example of uh, how you work with greens and handle greens, you know. And um, when we get to the color bed, I'll lay some on you. Now, in the members area, you can watch the whole uh, initial color mixing session as well as listen to me burble on as I'm um, uh, painting along. This is a good one because uh, I, I think the ones that do best in the members area are the ones around two to three hours, you know. Um, there are some in there that are up to seven, even eight hours long uh, of just things that were more involved. And um, it's not like you talk through the whole thing, you know, but it's, you're there. We're in the trenches together. So a lot of people have it on while they're painting and doing their thing, you know. It's kind of like we're in the room together painting. It's cool. Anyway, um, oh, blues. Okay, so I had uh, this uh, ultramarine on my palette left over from working with a student. And I'm not a fan. I mean, I ended up kind of subbing out some phthalo, you know. I can work with it. It just wasn't really doing what I wanted. And it was really, you know, so you see in that bottom bit, <clears throat> I like to bring in yellow ochre uh, and white um, towards the bottom of the skies. Uh, I think that works really well. And in general, yellow ochre is a great color for clouds and skies. Um, when I pre-mixed the uh, colors, which again you can see in the members area, I just mixed the kind of a warmish gray, which was, uh, oh, you know, ivory black, uh, titanium white, and a bunch of uh, raw umber. Actually, not, a, not as much raw umber as I put in this brown ochre. Um, and I really like this brown ochre from Old Holland. Um, it's the only color I get from them. It's an amazing color if you... Uh, you know, the kind of person that likes to try out new pigments and stuff. Check it out. Go get yourself a tube. Hey, we got an ad for the book coming up. Been getting orders for the book. I'm really uh, glad about that. I'm shipping them out. I'm going to ship one out tomorrow. Um, it's 60 bucks uh, U.S. And that includes the international shipping, which is pricey like so many things. But I think you'll enjoy it. I, uh, I get a lot of good feedback. I'm, I'm trying to get better at marketing and stuff. Uh, so far, this is pretty much the only place you'll you'll see it marketed. And uh, yeah, I'm not really doing the electronic thing on it. Uh, that, that just, you know, 
it's, it's the high seas out there and at some point that'll be fine you know maybe after it finds a I, I would love if you were a publisher of books that like say you work for penguin or one of those people random house i think they might own each other now i don't know uh, you go to my website and contact me yeah anyway um so the other thing is uh i did i were coming in with some black now and um i did mix in a little burr number in the black I, I, not as much as i might normally I like to bring in the burn number into the black because it kind of warms it a little bit in a subtle way, but also speeds up the drying. So that's a good tip for you. I think it's a good tip. Now a lot of ours they like the chromatic black, but I honestly have done I have done toneless paintings with chromatic black. Um, I think it was an incredible struggle. I was working against uh, that 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 purple undertone the whole time. Um, the the toneless themselves they used ivory black they didn't even question it okay black has certain properties a lot of very subtle properties and you can do a lot with it so um, I, I can see I, I actually have a few uh, students that are art teachers and teach kids and things and uh, they don't give the kids with black because they make everything look ugly with it <laughs> don't you do that but uh, first of all it's the basis of the main green um, so the dark green here I did bring in some of that perylene I brought in the Mike's green which is like a hands of yellow which is a acrylide yellow I don't know the the number but it, it, you can see it is cad yellow hue or go to gambling get the code they have a good a good site or just buy their hands of yellow it's it's really good quality paint and uh, I mix that with ivory black or lamp black that's not so fussy you know um, that gives me that green you really the green you see me laying in now but in the darker cooler green and the that's going up against the black I brought in the perylene which is really fresh it has like um, properties similar to what's well, perylene black from Windsor Newton I call it perylene green because it's just a really dark green um, but it has these um, awesome properties like do the kind of stuff I would normally use thalo for but thalo you always have to compensate because it's just so fake looking it's the fakest looking of all the pigments thalo green not thalo blue thalo blue is wonderful and I think mostly because you think with thalo blue it's always you're, you're always checking in the white and I, without even thinking I'll just throw in some like uh some raw umber too to just natural get it more natural but the little green when you when you bring in the, that yellow and it hits that green it's like wow um anyway for the the highlight color um it was cad orange okay and i've laid this and then and yes some cad yellow but uh, i think a lot of people would just automatically go for the cad yellow thinking well that's going to make a nice light green but the cad orange um it's more natural feeling and then you can subtly bring in the cat yellow there so I use the cat orange the same way like into the Mike's green mixture I chucked my uh, burnt sienna I always do that not as much here as I would normally because you can see I have a very red underpainting so there's if you were to zoom in on this you'd see so much of that coming through you'd be like whoa you know, that's a lot but I don't worry about that that's why one of the reasons I use a colored ground um, you know you know some people there's a couple different things that people do to deal with that uh, you know like a lot of artists like say uh, Richard Schmidt you know um, uh, or or uh, Dennis Sheehan people like that um, they'll go and do washes with terps and um, or you know mineral, mineral spirits and thin oil paint and that gives them a colored you know something that's tinting that white canvas but even those bits showing through are going to be kind of bright you know I think there's a to me the the nice thing about having a red or a brown peeking through is that you don't need to slow down so much where where uh, your edges meet or overlap a lot of times you can leave quite a bit of that red and everything just has a hum and and now Burge Harrison in his book about landscape painting which is other than my book one of the only books specifically about toneless painting now I sort of disagree with Burge and Burge is amazing and it, but Burge claims that the major innovation of the toneless was to paint on red okay 
and he said the 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 people before like even including the Barbizon like Corot I believe worked on a brown or gray you know I don't, he certainly didn't work on a, and now his color's not amazing so we're not gonna you know Corot of course genius brilliant the, really the one of the main architects of tonalism anyway uh, you know Birch says that red that hum you know you get that's that's the tonalist thing and he's not he's not wrong but you can do it on brown to uh, Burge I'm, I'm sorry I gotta disagree with you but hey you know when you, I, I understand I wrote a book when you're writing a book you got to make statements you know you gotta you can't be so uh, you can't be so wishy-washy and and the the gal that helped me out with the um, the editing uh, you know she caught me out on a lot of that because I always say things to soften my I make big bold statements and then said about softening <laughs> anyway thanks for joining me today that's pretty much the end of the video um until they come back with a, another video for your edification and enjoyment do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself your family all your loved ones stay out of trouble and god bless you and your family what do you think of this new outro by the way pretty groovy huh yeah, uh, that's in Adobe Express, Express. That's free, so you can have a plan.